The coroner's role is to find out the identity of the person who died, as well as the date, place and medical cause of their death if possible. In some cases, the coroner also needs to investigate the circumstances surrounding the death. This usually involves a police officer gathering various pieces of information on the coroner's behalf. When Sarah died, the police told me that a death would need to be investigated by the coroner. I actually didn't know what a coroner did, let alone why they need to be involved, especially since the police told me that a death wasn't suspicious. The focus of the coroner is to prevent similar deaths from happening, not to find blame. But in order for the coroner to determine whether the death could have been prevented, he or she must first investigate why and how the death occurred in the first instance. Not all coronial investigations result in an inquest. A coroner will usually decide to hold an inquest if they believe there are broader issues of public health and safety that need to be examined in order to prevent similar deaths or if the circumstances surrounding the death are unclear. Sometimes it is also mandatory that an inquest be held. Inquests are public and can be attended by anyone, including the media, unless the coroner orders otherwise. During the inquest, the coroner calls witnesses to give evidence. A lawyer called counsel assisting the coroner or a police officer called the coroner's assistant usually helps the coroner in court. It is their job to ask witnesses questions. Other people, called interested parties, can also ask a witness questions. You actually don't need a lawyer to take part of the inquest. They told me that the coroner's assistant would help, but I was just more comfortable with a lawyer asking questions of the witnesses. But that choice was left completely up to me. I don't think anyone can ever really prepare you for what it's like to sit in court and hear the details of the death of someone you love spoken about so openly. Thankfully the court had a counsellor I could speak to and they had volunteers from the court network who sat with me through the whole thing. It was a, a big relief to know that no matter how difficult it got, there was always someone there that I could turn to for help. The coroner's court works differently to other courts in that it can't assign blame. The coroner's inquest tries to find out what happened rather than hold a trial, so no one gets found guilty or innocent. It took me a while to understand that even though this was a hearing, it's not about punishment. In the end, I just wanted to feel some comfort of knowing that what can be done has been done, so that what happened to Sarah doesn't happen to anyone else. Inquest hearings can vary from an hour to many weeks, depending on their complexity and the number of witnesses called to give evidence. Generally, you will be notified of the amount of time the inquest is set down for. However, this can be longer or shorter than estimated. At the end of the inquest, the coroner adjourns the hearing to prepare their written finding. It may be some time before the coroner reconvenes the court to hand down his or her finding. All inquest findings are published on the court's website unless otherwise ordered by the coroner. For more information, please refer to the links below.